My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Many people have been telling me that marriage is not a public policy issue. It is a social issue. In fact, one organization in Texas recently wrote back to me and they said, we won't deal with the topic of marriage because marriage is a social issue. I did write back to them and I mentioned, no, it is not a social issue. It is a public policy issue that actually has social ramifications. There's a difference between the two. Marriage is mentioned in the Texas State Constitution, and marriage as a public policy is even referred to in the Texas Family Code and other places. So as I was thinking about this whole topic about marriage as just a social issue, uh, and particularly as it pertains to, the, to divorce, I did some research today and I found an article from the Investor's Business Daily. Now, the Investor's Business Daily is not a social magazine. It is not a, a newspaper that is actually advocating for social policy. It, it is a business magazine. And in October 23rd of 2013, they ran an article called Five Ways Lenin's Propaganda Destroyed Marriage and the Family in Russia. And as I was reading this article, I could not help but think about Vladimir Lenin is alive and well today in Texas and particularly in the Texas Family Code. The success of a revolution, V.I. Lenin declared at the first all-Russian conference of working women in 1918, depends on how much women take part in it. And based on his writings, there was little doubt that he believed this. The problem was most Russian women weren't interested. Unlike what was going on elsewhere in Europe, where the suffrage movement was underway and the Industrial Revolution had drawn many women into the workforce, Industry in Russia was still in its infancy, and the female population was mostly rural and illiterate. So there was a little bit of a change here as far as the Leninism or Marxism, communism, whatever you want to call it, uh, was uh, in the Russian society. The focus was on the family, not what Marxism could do for the working class, because it wasn't the strong working class. So we're going to talk about how Leninism, Marxism, um, how they could help the family. But unlike economic classes such as the kulaks of the aristocrats who had fallen into his disfavor, women could not be liquidated. Their favorite institutions could, however, and that's why Lenin specifically targeted marriage and family in his effort to build a new Soviet man. Now notice that Lenin was actually targeting marriage and the family. And again, this is, comes from Investor's Business Daily, and uh, they continue on. Uh, five elements stand out in how Lenin and his Bolsheviks used propaganda to get women to support his revolution. So the first element to get women to support the revolution was this. They equated marriage with slavery. And we've heard that today, haven't we? Marriage is slavery. We should just, women need to be liberated from marriage and from the doldrums of family life. Lenin and his feminist lieutenants, particularly Alexandra Kolontai, the first female commissar in the Soviet government, considered much of what the suffragettes were fighting for, including voting rights and equal protection under the law, bourgeois convention. Sounds a lot like modern day feminism, doesn't it? What they had in mind was something far more radical, an all out war on old and outdated institutions like marriage and family so that the dominance of the state could be achieved. Instead of marriage, there would be more disposable unions of affection and comradeship. You notice what the Investor's Business Daily is saying. Lenin focused on destroying marriage and the family. That was his focus. That was the focus of Leninism, the focus of Marxism back in, in Russia at the turn of the century, the Pol Bolsheviks, they were trying to destroy marriage and the family. They had to get rid of that old and outdated institution. And instead of marriage, we were going to replace it with something much better. There would be disposable unions of affection and comradeship. So the first salvo in the liberation of the family was easy divorce, established almost immediately by the Bolsheviks. Abortion on demand, until then illegal in every country of the world, came in 1920. So first we have divorce on demand, and then we have abortion on demand. And by the way, we see that exact same pattern in the United States of America. In 1969, we had 
unilateral divorce on demand that was signed into law by Ronald Reagan, who later said it was one of the biggest mistakes he committed in public office. And in 1973, we had Roe v. Wade, which was essentially abortion on demand. But notice once again, divorce on demand actually preceded abortion on demand. The family is ceasing to be necessary either to its members or to the nation, Colin Kai wrote that year. But capitalists, she said, are well aware that the old type of family where a woman is a slave, look at this propaganda, whereas a woman is a slave and where the husband is responsible for the well-being of his wife and children is the best weapon in the struggle to stifle the desire of the working class for freedom and to weaken the revolutionary spirit of the working man and working woman. So in the fight for communism, the, the, the first salvo was to destroy marriage and the family and to equate marriage to slavery, to tell the woman that she was a slave and that she needed to be liberated and that this liberation would um, help strengthen the revolutionary spirit of the working man and working woman. And notice that the Leninists knew that the enemy to all of this revolution was the family. So that's what they set out to destroy. And how did they set out to destroy it? Number one, with easy divorce. Number two, with easy abortion. Divorce on demand and abortion on demand. The Bolsheviks also allowed women to own land and vote, but these rights were rendered moot when the one party state took over. It is interesting how some of these ideologies promise something and then they change the promise after they get into power. The right to equal wages was in also instituted but largely ignored and as women were ghettoized into state chosen professions their wages went down. Liberation is leading to poverty and liberation also leads to enslavement. The idea behind breaking down the family was that women without husbands could be socialized more easily. How convenient. We're going to break down the family under the guise of women need to have more socialization. In practical terms, what this meant was that men were free to leave their wives and abandon their responsibilities, thereby making women wards of the state. That is what happened. The promise of freedom and liberation, and yet women became wards of the state. During the Russian Civil War, 90% of the female-dominated population of Petrograd, uh, St. Petersburg, the capital of the Russian Empire, was dependent on state handouts. So the second element that is mentioned in this article is viva la sameness. Lenin's Bolsheviks saw men and women as equal, but not in terms of opportunity. Instead, the imagery in their propaganda made the Soviet women look like men, women with thick necks, with brawny shoulders, with burly arms and army boots that blurred the lines between the sexes. The less distinguishable men and women were, the easier they were to manipulate. So what Lenin and his comrades tried to do was make women look like men. Uh, actually today, a very similar thing is happening, except many men now decide to look like women. We are blurring the, dis the distinctions and the differences between the genders. Uh, we are all one, we're all the same. Uh, but in, back then, they were trying to make women, turn women into men. Uh, after all, Lenin was promoting the new Soviet man. The third element of his program was this. It takes a village. The Bolsheviks believed that communism would eliminate the need for families. Underlying all of this was the ideology that communism would eliminate the need for families. The country, after all, would become one whole big family. Hearth and home were viewed as potentially subversive. Those who wanted to look out for their own children were selfish, Colin Ty wrote. Women should see all children as their own, with duties shared. This made it easier to force wives and mothers into factories and gave rise to daycare centers, does this sound like modern day America? Communal meals and even community laundries and clothing repair centers. The idea behind all of this was to sever the natural ties between mother and child so that the state could forge a new Soviet 
man. The fourth element uh, that, that is mentioned is that it takes a community organizer. Lenin dispatched Kolontai to set up the Zenatdal, a community organizing group financed by the Communist Party for agitation and propaganda of the new model. A whole organizing group set up for agitation and propaganda of the new model. Again, sounds like modern day America. Zenatdal representatives not only had their own publication, Communistica, they also were tasked with going out into the rural villages to set up community centers and force women's political participation. What did they do at the same time? They also agitated for divorce and they agitated for abortion and all other agenda items that Bolsheviks touted as liberating. Once again, in America today, we have people that say divorce on demand is liberating to women. Abortion on demand is liberating to women. And there are many other things that are liberating to women that go against natural law and go against every maternal instinct and completely is des designed to break down the family. As a result, large numbers of women lost their families, particularly in the Muslim South where they were attacked and murdered for divorce and they rapidly became outcasts. Many ended up in brothels. Wow, this liberating idea of the Soviet Union is now leading to enslavement and also degradation, degradation of the individual woman. Instead of esteeming a woman and lauding her for her feminine virtues, they have chosen instead to promise liberation, to turn her into a man, and then she ends up in brothels in a degrading profession. The communist uh, theory in motion in Russia. The fifth element finally is this, when socialism fails, blame funding. So, and we find this very much today as well. The social wreckage resulting from these policies was so extensive and left so many women impoverished and marginalized that Joseph Stalin reversed some of the so-called reforms and disbanded the Zanotdal in 1930, declaring women free, equal, and emancipated. So we just make a declaration and therefore it is, right? Kolontai and her allies knew better, but they did not blame the ideas. Oh no, no, the ideas were not at fault. What was at fault? They went to the state for not distributing enough money for daycare centers and soup kitchens. Whenever socialism fails, blame funding. And I would say the same thing for Children's Protective Services in the state of Texas. Children's Protective Services is an agency that has a amazing record of failure. And whenever a large public failure occurs, number one thing that uh, Commissioner Hank Whitman does is say, we will fix this problem. I will go back and get some more money and we will fix this problem. The entire Children's Protective Services will always be fixed with more money, more money, more money. And unfortunately, there are people in the state that believe this, including some members, very strong members in Congress and higher positions than that. If we just give more money to Children's Protective Services, we will fix the problem. The wreckage of Leninism in Russia is the exact same wreckage we are seeing in America when we embrace social, when we embrace failed policies, and especially when we try to destroy the marriage and family our Texas Family Code has adopted the foundational idea that Vladimir Lenin put into place when he got into power. Easy divorce. Divorce on demand. In the Texas Family Code, you can get divorced for any reason, for no reason. You have to have no proof. All you have to do is file for divorce and you put the courts into action. You destroy families and this is done regularly. In no case that I am aware of in the last five or even ten years has a divorce petition ever been denied. All you have to do is make an accusation of that the marriage is insupportable due to discord of personalities and the state of Texas like Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks will say we will grant the divorce, we will destroy the family, we will destroy the marriage when you have a weak family, when you have marriages that can be destroyed at will, 
you have the very ideology and the practices of Leninism. And this is what we have in the state of Texas. In 2019, we are seeking to repeal some of these practices. If we want to have a strong state, we need to have strong marriages and strong families. Thank you.